Can big data help treat autism? Well, our guest today on Feeling Good thinks this could be, in fact, the way forward. She is Lynn Durham, CEO and founder of Geneva-based Stalikla. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All right, when we talk about autism, you know, there, there are, we are aware that there are a lot of stats out there. You know, you've got the World, the World Health Organization saying that it's one in 100 and every 160 children worldwide. You've got other stats used here in Switzerland and elsewhere. Um, where for you is, uh, what is the size of the, of the problem for you? Well, actually, um, this is a question that uh, allows me uh, to uh, focus on big data. One of the problems uh, with uh, autism spectrum disorder and uh, with uh, neuropsychiatric disorders in general is that they are not well characterized. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they are not well characterized, prevalence estimates are uh, very difficult to establish. So you just mentioned one in 160 for the World Health Organization. Mm -hmm. The CDC, Center for Disease Control, talks about one in 59 eight-year-old school children. And in Europe, prevalence is estimated at one uh, in 100 children. And Switzerland? Why is that? Switzerland, there are no official statistics yet in Switzerland. Okay. And that's okay. because it's an ill-defined disease. And big data uh, is uh, an approach to better uh, define and uh, identify subgroups of patients. In oncology, for example, these approaches have been used to be able to stratify patient populations and bring personalized medicine to these patients. Well, we're taking the same approach with autism spectrum disorder to be able to stratify patients by analyzing data and matching these patient subgroups with the right treatments. Mm -hmm. So doing so is based on an assumption that we are not focusing on behavior, but on biology. Okay, all right. So um, in other words, you are focusing more on the causes rather than the symptoms. Correct. Which is what is most treatable now are the symptoms, i.e. depression, seizures, et cetera, more of the common uh, symptoms that people with an autism spectrum disorder suffer from, right? To be precise, um, we um, are stepping away from the paradigm of autism as a behavioral condition, which is currently the state of the art. There are some manuals, the DSM-5 that classifies psychiatric uh, diseases, uh, that states that autism is a uh, um, conjunct disturbance of communication, social interaction, um, and repetitive behavior. But that description... This is basically how, okay, how you describe autism exactly. in general. Exactly. Okay. But that description doesn't uh, allow uh, to uh, identify the biology of the patients and makes drug development uh, literally impossible. So. At Stalikla, we are drug developers, but we are on a mission to educate people about the fact that there is no such thing as autism, there are autisms. Okay, so if I am a parent and I, I, I have this, uh, you know, and my child could be possibly diagnosed with, with autism, uh, walk me through what I would be looking for, what that looks like. Usually, um, the first uh, obvious uh, symptoms uh, which are based on behavior, uh, are identifiable uh, around uh, two years old. And uh, when uh, children uh, are taken to psychiatrists, usually parents are taken through questionnaires that are not uh, uh, based on biology, but only on behavior. And then uh, when the child meets a certain score threshold, mm -hmm. uh, he is said to have autism spectrum disorder. But that's very far away from biology. And so that doesn't offer any insight into the specific biology of this specific child or his specific subgroup. Okay, so if, okay, again, I'm a parent who's, whose child is possibly autistic, how can your technology help me? So um, drug development um, is a process uh, that is regulated and that takes time. What we are looking to do um, is uh, to uh, serve these patients um, in a realistic uh, and uh, uh, economically uh, constructive way. Drug mm -hmm. development is extremely expensive. So yes. um, 
If you want to uh, fast track drug development for patients with autism, you have to define your patient subgroups, and this is what our technology, our deep high technology platform allows us to do. And then you can match patients with targets and existing drugs that can then be selected for their commercial perspective to be fast-tracked through the regulatory process. And instead of having a 20-year uh, drug development process, we are looking through our technology to shortcut uh, this development and uh, develop personalized medicine uh, and put our first personalized medicine pipeline on the market within five to six years. In, okay, in order to fast track mm -hmm. a pharmaceutical drug mm -hmm. um, for treatment, is the problem then that you need to be able to really identify these subgroups? Is that is that where the... That's the core um, of the issue. It doesn't move forward because they're not able to identify the subgroups? Is it's, that where the, it's the one, disconnect is happening? This is, I think you, uh, you have uh, uh, put your finger on the biggest issue in uh, autism drug development. Mm -hmm. The lack of subgroup, the lack of biological characterization of patients has impaired any drug development. Any has impaired the possibility for any drug development because to be able to treat a patient, you need to identify your patient. And currently, patients with autism are identified through their behavior, mm -hmm. and their behavior right. is not predictive of their, the underlying biological disruption in these patients. What are the autism experts saying? So, what kind of feedback uh, have you got? At Stalikla, uh, we've, uh, in the last 18 months, we've been uh, able to uh, put together a team that includes uh, world experts uh, in the field of autism. Can you give me an example? Yes, uh, our chief medical officer is uh, Dr. Walter Kaufman, who's um, an MIT, uh, Harvard, uh, Hopkins uh, um, child psychiatry uh, professor and one of the authors of the current definition of autism. Mm -hmm. So this really shows that uh, we are operating a shift in paradigm for a very large uh, addressable uh, uh, market. I mean, clearly we've discussed it. I mean, there is a need and you've got your, your experts also supporting you, but is the science really there? The science is there because we are is using- Is your solution really viable? We are not claiming to cure patients. We are claiming to better identify patient subgroups to be able to then match their biology with existing compounds. So mm -hmm. actually, this is highly reducing the risk and the scientific uncertainty that usually accompanies uh, drug development. And this is why our investors um, have uh, uh, backed us, because we are de-risking uh, drug development with an enormous addressable market. How are you, are you working with patients already? Are there trials? I mean, how can you prove this works? So uh, we, our platform, uh, first goal was to characterize, identify subgroups of patients. And uh, we have various leading uh, academic uh, partners, including the Greenwood uh, Genetic uh, Center uh, based uh, in uh, South Carolina, which is a leading a center for genetic research mm -hmm. in the field of neurodevelopmental disorders and autism. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to prove in the clinic, in an observational clinical trial, that our predictive subgrouping was actually correct. So we have identified two subgroups of patients with autism that have been validated in the clinic. And we have shown that these patients have a specific mm. biological marker Okay. Uh, that is distinct, that is different from the markers that you can see in other patients with autism or controls. So basically the problem in autism up to now is that there are no biomarkers mm -hmm. and the That's key the to be able too. to bring medicine to these patients is to identify consistent biomarkers. It is potentially something that could have a very massive impact on, on families and which Brings me to the question, you know, when you propose a solution for something like 
like autism spectrum disorder, it also comes with a lot of responsibility because you're almost selling hope to I, families and patients. I really profoundly uh, acknowledge this. Um, I have a lifelong involvement with the autism community. Um, I'm connected with people with autism uh, very personally. And uh, this is about um, acknowledging the diversity of patients so that they get access to uh, personalized medicine uh, to the same extent than patients who suffer from other type of diseases, such as cancer. The solution in cancer is to identify subgroups of patients to bring personalized medicine to patients. Well, in autism and in psychiatry in general, we're just looking at a behavior mm -hmm. and hoping that uh, you know, one treatment will work for a group of patients who are actually not being identified personally. Mm -hmm. So the solutions that we are bringing is not one solution. It's an approach, it's a technology, a platform to identify patients and bring personalized medicine to these patients. And then we are developing drugs and we have already a drug that we have advanced towards the clinic. We're already talking with regulatory agency, okay. the FDA in okay. the US mm -hmm. to advance our first okay. pipeline in the clinic. So we've established obviously the demand is there. You are very passionate, very passionate advocate and researcher of the subject. Where are you? now in the process? So we are currently uh, raising our Series A, second series of financing for 20 million. Um, okay. The first uh, subtype of patients that we have uh, identified, uh, both clinically and biologically, represent 20%, uh, uh, about 20% of the autism uh, population. Uh, the corresponding uh, uh, drug package that we have, we are currently developing for them, uh, would mean uh, an addressable market of several billion dollars. So investors mm -hmm. uh, are looking at an opportunity offering a billion uh, uh, dollar uh, market penetration uh, opportunity in a very uh, high unmet medical need. And, uh, and this is at the end of the year. By the end of the year, you get this funding? or Our Series uh, A is closing uh, by the end of the year. OK, all right. And where, where are you in terms of regulation? So at the regulatory level, uh, we are advancing uh, our IND, Investigational New Drug uh, Application, uh, towards the uh, FDA for uh, authorization to enter clinical trials by the end of 2019, early 2020. Okay. So this is a very uh, fast uh, uh, time uh, to uh, clinic and to market. And would these clinical trials be in the US then? The uh, clinical trials will be initiated in the US and this is uh, essentially due to um, more awareness at the regulatory level, but also to the fact that we have key partnerships mm -hmm. uh, with uh, leading uh, uh, organizations in autism uh, in the US, including the Autism Treatment Network, uh, which has 30 clinical sites and with whom we're developing partnerships to uh, advance uh, our clinical trials and replicate our results. Okay, so just to, to bring it home then and to wrap it up, Again, if, if I am a parent of a child with, with some autism spectrum disorder, uh, when could I see the fruits of your labor? When could I benefit from what you're doing? I think that um, that's a complex uh, question, but I will answer it uh, in two folds. The first thing is to understand that um, there is no such thing as autism. There are autisms. So, um, Answering that question is very similar to answering uh, the same question in another field, such as cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, if my uh, uh, child or my parent has cancer, uh, does this cancer drug, uh, will this cancer drug bring a solution for him? Well, mm -hmm. actually, the technology that allows to identify new cancer drugs uh, will offer solutions for subgroups of patients. Okay. So it really depends on the individual subgroup. Some subgroups could have uh, uh, drugs that target their core symptoms. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about our first subgroup uh, that is 20% of the autism population that could have 
uh, drugs, personalized medicine within uh, five to uh, seven years. Okay, all right. So, okay, but there's a number there. There's a five number there. Seven years. It's about identifying subgroups. Mm -hmm. We've identified two subgroups, phenotype one and phenotype two. Phenotype one uh, seems to represent about 20% of the autism population. Uh, we have uh, identified a phenotype 2 that seems also to represent or to cover about 20% of the autism spectrum disorder population. So uh, our first uh, drug uh, pipeline uh, is advancing uh, towards uh, uh, the clinic and uh, we hope for it to reach the market within five to seven years. Great. All right. Thank you so much, Lynn, Thank for you. your insights and for sharing your, your passion project with us. Thank you.